Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning as we come together to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this, the third Sunday of Lent. Uh, please make note of the announcements that are there in your bulletin. There are a few, uh, just a few that I would like to highlight. Uh, we have some wonderful committees of the church that could really use some more people. So uh, uh, mostly our, our Christian Education Committee, our Finance, Personnel, and our Worship and Music Committees uh, uh, could really use some more bodies and minds and ideas and, and everything like that. So if you have any slight interest, if you could be talked in to serving on one of these committees, please let me know or, or let one of our elders know and we will gladly find something for you to do. So uh, uh, please think about that, pray about it, uh, because really these committees, they are what brings everything about. It all starts there and then, and then builds to fruition for what we see on Sunday mornings and throughout the week. Uh, masking. We had our, at our last session meeting, we decided we were gonna go by what current CDC ratings are for us. So low, medium, uh, high or elevated. I don't know how they, they label the third one. But green, yellow, orange, if you look on the CDC site and see what we are. I believe right now we're green. I think the whole state of New York last time I looked was green. So that means uh, masking, completely optional, uh, all through service. Medium, masking optional, more requested, we'll mask when we sing. And if we get back up to the, to the elevator to the high area, then we'll pop our mask back on while we're doing indoor worship. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, please let me know. Uh, just an announcement about our uh, mission giving. Uh, we raised some money for Ukraine. It came to a total of $2,200, and thankful for all those who, who gave funds. 250 of that came from our PWC, $500 from our mission committee, and then the rest came from uh, all you wonderful folks. So thank you for your support for these people in need. Are there any other announcements this morning? Let us take a moment. Let us quiet the world around us as we prepare our hearts, our souls, our minds for the worship of our Lord, beginning with the music of our prelude.
Please join me in our call to worship this morning. Everyone who thirsts, waters, seek the Lord. Repent and return so that you may live. All who are hungry for righteousness, the waters, seek the Lord. Repent and return so that you may live. All who need the help of God, Our opening hymn today is number 307, God of Grace and God of Glory. The scriptures call for us to turn from sinful ways and to return to God who offers mercy and pardon, trusting in that mercy. Let us call upon God who is near. Please join me in our prayer of reconciliation. Holy God, we confess that we have grown complacent in our response to you. You have set before us a reach which feast of blessing but we are drawn to lesser things that cannot satisfy. You call us to attend to urgent needs in the world, but we indulge in our own desires. Our ways are not your ways. Our thoughts do not ascend to your thoughts. Forgive us when we fall short of your claim upon our lives. Disturb our complacency and quicken our desire for a more fruitful life. Be patient, we pray, as we amend who we are in the hope of becoming who you intend us to be. 
let us take a moment for our own silent confession. Amen. Hear this, children of God. There is nothing that can, there is nothing that has, there is nothing that will separate you from God's love. Christ came to be with you. No, your sins are forgiven. And be at peace. Amen. Because God has forgiven us, let us forgive one another. Let us welcome each other with the peace of Jesus Christ, saying the peace of Christ be with you. Let us safely pass the peace of Christ one to another. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? You're awake? Wonderful. Wonderful. So am I. Probably because I've had like three cups of coffee. But that's just me. So today we are going to talk about a guy named Mr. Rogers. Yes, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. And now, now some of you may remember Mr. Rogers He's been off the air for quite a while, but, but you may have seen, like, the spinoff, I guess, uh, uh, Daniel, Daniel Tiger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. Yeah, he kind of carried it on in this animated form of, of what Mr. Rogers did. So Mr. Rogers was a, was a guy that was on PBS for many, many years. He was also a Presbyterian minister. Yes, yes, he was a Presbyterian minister. And he had this wonderful show where he would talk to young people and kids just about being a good neighbor and caring for each other and loving each other. And, and I believe his birthday is today or, or right around this time. So, so for our denomination, we kind of said, you know, we should start recognizing that and calling it like Mr. Rogers Sunday. So that's part of what today is. But one of the things that I want to talk about is something that he said, and it'll tie into our big sermon too. So... Somebody asked Mr. Rogers what, what to do when, when things are bad. And some of you guys may know what's going on in the news about some of the people that are getting hurt uh, across the world in Ukraine. And sometimes we just hear about some bad things that happen, right? So Mr. Rogers gave us or gave you, you, you little ones, a, a lesson to do and in, in what to look for during those times. He said, you know, you see those bad things happen. And then you see these people that go to help. So he said, you know, when you're worried, when you're sad, and he talked about this with his mom when he was a kid, she had said, no, look for the helpers. Because you'll find them. You'll find the people that are working and helping and caring for others. Sometimes it's people that are bringing food to people in need. Sometimes it's our people that wear different uniforms that are, that are uh, uh, helping people that might have gotten in a car wreck or taking somebody to the hospital. Or sometimes it's people 
that are just doing what they can to be a friend to somebody who may be crying or sad. So when the world out there is sometimes scary, and it is, look for the helpers, okay? Those people that will care for you and that will help one another. And in that, when we see those helpers, we kind of see God. So can you pray with me? Let us pray. Dear God, open our eyes to see the helpers. And give us strength to be the helpers. As we pray and as we play. Amen. Thank you, guys. Our first reading today comes from the Old Testament, comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 through 9. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no mercy, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant. My steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. So you shall call the nations that you do not know. And the nations that you do not know shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For God has glorified you. Seek the Lord while the Lord may be found. Call upon the Lord, the Lord while God is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. And let them return to the Lord, that the Lord may have mercy on them, and to our God, for God will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, my soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. Lord, my soul. My God, I seek you, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Lord, my soul. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. Lord, my soul clings to you. My soul is 
satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I think of you on my bed, and meditate on you in the watches of the night, Lord, my Our epistle reading today comes from Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, from chapter 10, verses 1 through 13. Paul writes this, I do not want you to be unaware, children of God, that our ancestors are all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that flowed them. The rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God is not pleased with most of them. And they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters, as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. Do not indulge in sexual immorality, as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example. And they were written down to instruct us on whom the end of the ages have come. So if you think that you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and God will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, God will also provide a way out so that you may be able to endure it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. God of all knowledge and wisdom, send us your spirit. Awaken our hearts and our minds to hear the words of your truth. In this time, quiet the world around us. Reveal to us love. Teach us your ways and let us know your grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Our gospel message takes us back to the 13th chapter of Luke. Here, Jesus is speaking to the disciples and also to a larger crowd. And there's this lengthy discourse that our reading drops us off right in the middle of. In the previous chapter, Jesus was discussing money and foolishness and the need to be prepared and to watch for the Lord who comes like a thief in the night. As chapter 13 begins, Jesus is answering a question from the crowd, a question dealing with some tragic events at the time. Jesus goes on to mention another and then adds a parable. Before reading, I, th I think it's good just to explain the events that happened so we just don't gloss over them as we're going through the passage there in the Bible. The first concerns the slaughter of some Galileans in the temple of Jerusalem. A major affront, not just the killing of people, but the place where it would have been done. And we should remember that Jesus is a Galilean. So this story would have hit even closer to home. Pilate, the Roman government, the, the Roman governor, has had Galilean men killed while they were making their sacrifices to God. Literally, while they were worshiping, they were killed. The second event deals with the tragic death of 18 people. We believe caused by an accident. It gives us a glimpse into dealing with the suffering found in the world. And with that in mind, let us give attention to God's truth as it's found in Luke chapter 13. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then Jesus told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for the fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have been coming looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and I put manure on it. And if it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the past month, we've learned of horror stories coming out of Ukraine. Stories of people traveling for days, leaving everything behind. Their homes, sometimes members of their family, parents sending children, hoping for safety, for security. We hear about maternity hospitals being attacked Theaters, a theater of children being bombed. A country being invaded, people being killed as we watch. And sadly, maybe we're just seeing this one more because it's happened before. Happened to the people of Syria. 
happened to the people of Sudan, happened to the people of Nigeria, happened to the people of Ethiopia, happens to the people at our southern border as they flee from the drug cartels. It happens in many places in our world. Two years ago, we were sent home. Schools closed, offices closed, restaurants closed. It's estimated that six million people worldwide have died from COVID-19. Over 800,000 here in the U.S. I don't think it's too hard for us to stretch our imagination to find a correlation with the news that Jesus is talking about in his time to see tragedy unfold in our time today. When Christ walked the earth, the crowd was quick to ask, what sin caused this tragedy? Or at least we believe that that's what they asked based on Jesus' response. Similar to the story from the Gospel of John with the man that was born blind and the disciples ask, who caused this sin, him or his parents? And along with the deaths that are due to violence there in the temple, Jesus also mentions 18 killed by an accident. There's this question that moves through the reading. Did all this happen as God's punishment for sin? And while we've distanced ourselves from those direct feelings for the most part, a lot of times the question at the base of it still remains, which is why is there so much suffering in this world? Or to put it another way, is the suffering because of something we've done? Is it from God? And if God is not the cause, why did God not prevent it from happening? We ask these questions on global levels. We ask these questions on personal levels. I'm sure many, if not all of us, ask these questions when we face the loss or the suffering of a parent, a spouse, a sibling, a child, a friend, we at least have that fleeting thought of why, God, why? And the frustrating part I had with today's sermon, and you may have with hearing today's sermon, is I don't have these answers. I mean, yeah, we can go back to Adam and Eve, the idea of the fall of humanity, the entrance of pain and suffering and sin. But in the end, I don't see how that's justification for all the suffering that we face. Our news and our social media is quick to find somebody to blame. Our own perceptions are expanded to this idea of infallible knowledge where almost everyone knows what their neighbor should do to make it better. But it won't make those who have lost their life get their life back. And the idea of some political squabble, I'm just done with. So children of God, if you're looking for answers for why, I'm sorry. Jesus didn't give us the reason. And the sermon wasn't titled, Here are the Answers, but looking for them. And I don't have them. I'm sure I don't have the answers you want. That being said, there are messages from today's reading. 
First, I don't believe that suffering is some form of punishment from God. Jesus answers, we believe are the innocents that are killed by Pilate or the ones killed by a tragic accident, that they're not just greater sinners than the rest of the population. Of course not. And secondly, just because suffering is not God's punishment, it also doesn't mean that sin doesn't have any part to play in the pain. Just as Pilate's killings were sinful, much of the suffering humanity faces today are the consequences of the sin of people. Sin has dire consequences. And the more sin we refute, the less sin we commit, the less suffering there will be in the world. That part rings true. Repent, turn away. Then maybe things will change. And that brings us to an important point. God is neither the cause nor is God happy with the suffering and tragedy in God's creation. That's why Jesus gives us this parable of the fig tree. And we always have to be careful when we assign roles to the parables of Jesus. And this is going to be even greater importance when we get to next week's sermon when we deal with the famous parable, the parable of the prodigal son. I mean, maybe we want to see, yes, God is the landowner and Jesus is the gardener and us sinners are the fig tree. But that kind of paints this mean and vengeful God doesn't it? Out to cut us down. And if it wasn't for the friendly Jesus there to save us. And all too often, especially like last week, God is portrayed as this caring, loving being, the mother hen who longs for us under the wing, the one who's searching for the lost, the widow searching for the lost coin, the shepherd looking for the lost sheep, the father welcoming his lost son. Chapter 15 on Luke will tell us there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents over the 99 who need no repentance. It doesn't seem like God's out there to be vengeful. So maybe this idea of the landowner is the world or the way we believe the world should be. We want things to be fair. Trees should produce fruit or be cut down and not waste the soil. Don't take up space for those who are productive. You're not entitled to the soil you're planted in until you have a purpose. Goodness is rewarded, sin is punished. And sometimes the world Let's us believe that's the way it should be. But maybe our Lord is the gardener. God is the one who doesn't respond with punishment, but mercy, with grace, with care, with tilling the ground, with fertilizing, with loving. God came to us in Jesus Christ for this reason so that we could be given a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance to be reconciled with the Lord, so that we could be given new life. And maybe if we view this parable this way, we begin to start to look at the cross differently too. As I've delved deeper into my faith, I see the cross as less of this idea of substitutionary atonement that said that Jesus had to be killed and punished for my sins, that Christ's su suffering and death is this substitute for sin. I mean, that may be part of it, and there's a good biblical case for it. Yet I don't think we need to limit the power of the cross and the resurrection. 
there can be more. And that is that Jesus loves us enough to take on our lot and our lives fully, to identify with us completely. In the cross, we can see how far God is willing to go to be with us and for us even to the point of suffering unjustly and dying the death of a criminal. And in the resurrection, we see God's solidarity and that God's love is stronger than anything else, even death. So the answer about dealing with suffering is that God is there, that God is with us, that God understands our suffering even more than we do. My thoughts are greater than your thoughts, God says. My understanding of the suffering is greater than your understanding of the suffering. That doesn't mean it hurts less. That God has promised to redeem all things, even the injustice, even the suffering. So that when we hear those tragedies out there. That's not the last word. I mentioned the story to the children of Mr. Rogers saying, look for the helpers. It's a good story to remember. And it's a good story to remember that that's for the kids. The story for all of us is to be the helpers is to be the ones that do what we can to ease the suffering and the injustice in this world. Because God is there saying, here I am and I am with you. I know your pain, I know your loss, I've experienced it all. And God will keep waiting for us, keep urging us to turn away from our self-destructive habits, to be drawn to the embrace of a loving God. That's the answer. God's not going to take away the pain. We're not even going to live into those false verses of the Bible that God's going to give us, that God won't give us more than we can handle. Happens a lot. A lot of people have more than they can handle. I don't think it comes from God most of the time. But God's going to join us when everything's gone. When we have nothing left, God will be there. God will care for us. God will hold us and shield us with the Lord's right hand so that we may know the truth that is love, that there is nothing that can, there's nothing that will, there's nothing that has separated us from God's love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our hymn of response today is number 445. God, how can we forgive?
Please be seated. We come to the moment where we lift up our thoughts, our prayers, our concerns, our joys. We give them to God. We have our names there listed in our bulletin. Are there others to be lifted up today? Yes. Prayers for a successful recovery from your niece's surgery. Are there others? And since I, I have the microphone and I can, have you noticed our beautiful flowers today? We're given in honor of Jean Tiroli's 92nd birthday, which was yesterday. Um, I love seeing Jean's smiling face every morning. It's a, I enjoy putting you on the spot, Jean. Are there others to be lifted up today? We, of course, we remember all those who are suffering in all parts of the world as we bring to God all our heart and our soul. Let us pray. God of glory, God of might, God of peace, God of power, Hindu, our lives make yourselves known. Let us find peace and understanding in your world. Let us forgive. Let us accept forgiveness. Let us understand that nothing holds back grace, except sometimes ourselves. Lord, we give thanks for this beautiful world that you have placed in us, with, us within. For the beauty that we have had in this past week and the hope that we have as spring has arrived for renewal, for color and beauty and glory as it springs forth from the earth. To Lord, you we pray. Lord, we give thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, who has come to be with us, to be one of us, to save us. As we enter into the season of Lent, give us the strength and the wisdom to listen to Christ's word, to turn away from the things that keep us from you, and to run to you with open arms, waiting for your embrace. Lord, we ask that you fill us with your spirit that we receive calm and peace and understanding. And we laugh and we cry and we know you hear it all. Lord, let us work to be the helpers in your world in need of healing, in need of peace. As we repent, Lord, let us turn to you and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. There we go. Our bulletin had a lot of pages today. <laughs> Please hear this call for the offer. Disciples of Jesus, children of God, we often spend our money on the things that are not true bread, and we labor towards the things that will never satisfy. In our offering, we give to things that are of God, bread for the hungry, good news for those who are oppressed, the ministries of the church that welcomes strangers. 
we bring before God a portion of all that God has so freely given to us. Please join me in our prayer of dedication. God of the wilderness and the promised land, in the days of want and the days of plenty, you have been with us. By these gifts we now share, may others know of your providence and care. Send us not only our offerings, but our very selves to console and comfort, to lift up and reach out to listen and sit beside your children everywhere at one table you have set through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn today is number 800, Sometimes a Light Surprises.
God's world, sharing love and peace and justice and hope. May the face of God shine upon you. May you know the love of Jesus Christ. May you be connected one to another and to our Creator through the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.